church family, Pastor Nat here. Welcome to the Rockhampton Baptist Church devotional channel. Today is the last of my spiritual formation and food devotions. And I want to pull it all together because I've had, had a thought in the back of my mind as I put all of these devotions together. First we looked at bread and how it symbolizes God's provision for his people. And then we looked at chocolate and how it was an example of God's good in creation. God's way is valuable. And coffee demonstrates that the Christian life will not be easy. If we live out life following Jesus, we will face trials and suffering. But even in our suffering, there's good fruit. And wine is an example of our need to discern. And the garden, the fruits and vegetables remind us of the presence of the Holy Spirit in this world who dwells in us, empowering us to live the life of the kingdom of God now. I'm going to say something now that goes against all of the popular teaching about discipleship and spiritual formation. Authentic spiritual formation, what we call discipleship, is not efficient. Authentic spiritual formation is not efficient. Spiritual formation is unique for every individual person. It is never the same for any two people. Spiritual formation takes time, effort and the skillful hands of the Holy Spirit. Just like the food examples I've been using, for each example, there is a cheaper, consistently the same, large scale and efficient option. But the bigger the scale, the less like the original it becomes. But I, what, I want with our, what we want with our bread, chocolate, coffee and wine and fruit and veg is the artisan option, the one crafted by skillful hands, the one that has depth. Spiritual formation and discipleship are not efficient. Let me give you one example with bread. An artisan baker develops a beautiful loaf of bread and everyone who tastes it raves about its quality. And one day a businessman comes along, he sees a way of making a few dollars. And so he comes to the baker and says, we need to get this bread, it's so awesome, we need to get it out to more people. So they work on how to mass produce this unique bread. And pretty soon they realize they can't do it the same way on a large scale. So they change the quantities. They change the time it takes. They change the, the venue, the location where it is made, to a fancy new factory. And each one of these changes diminishes the original product. At the end, they have a product that's consistent. It's able to be made at large quantities, but it's not the same bread that the artisan baker used to make. It's a new thing and not the same quality. Paul lays out the aim of spiritual formation in Galatians. You probably know it well. So let's read from Galatians 5, 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Maybe go back a little bit. Sorry. Maybe I didn't read. I didn't put it in. You got there and fruit like bread. And so you come back in. Yeah. And fruit like bread, chocolate and coffee takes time to grow. Can you tell me that a tomato off the shelf is the same as the one that you grew in your backyard? And the same is true of the fruit of the spirit. The fruit that has been grown over time with individual care and the right fertilizer is always better quality. I want to note one thing that stands out to me and then give you a story from my own life. The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians is singular. It's one fruit. The list we have describes a fruit just like I can describe this apple, I can describe the color of the skin. I can describe the flesh inside. And I can describe the smell and its shape. But I'm not describing lots of different fruit. I'm describing an apple. The fruit of the Spirit is the same. It has a shape. It has a way about it. It has a perfume or a bouquet. The fruit of the Spirit grows in us as we work with the Holy Spirit to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. And sometimes we get a glimpse of the fruit that is being pro produced. A couple of weeks ago, I got into a small car accident. Luckily, both of us must have pulled away in the opposite direction when we heard the crunch and there was not much damage to either car. Just as it happened, I could see the man um, through my window and he was giving me a scowl and 
a hand gesture to indicate that he was not impressed. So we both pulled over and got out of our cars. The first thing I said to him was, are you okay? I think he had been expecting me to yell at him and be angry, but I was concerned for him because we know car accidents are really dangerous. And this initial concern led to a conversation. We inspected both of our vehicles and I passed my name and information over. I didn't plan to respond to him in this way, but it was a sign for me of how much I have changed. You can't pretend to have the fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't work that way. Now, I'm not, I'm not just trying to present myself as perfect and always demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit. If you ask anybody who is close to me, they will, they will confirm that I too am prone to bursts of anger, selfishness, hostility, tri strife, jealousy and, and pure motives. These are the things Paul is comparing the fruit of the Spirit to in Galatians. So I hope that you, as you go away from these devotions, that you continue to be reminded of what it means to be spiritually formed. I hope that one day you'll just think to yourself, I should make so-and-so a loaf of bread and take it over. Or fill your pockets with chocolates and go on a chocolate giving spree. And maybe one day you can get an experience like I had of a glimpse of the fruit that the Spirit is doing in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessings of good food, good friends, and good conversation. We repent for the times we have neglected to acknowledge you. Forgive us. Form us into the men and women you would have us be, and prompt us to be a blessing to the people of Rockhampton. Change our hearts, Lord, and we love you heaps. Amen. I hope you have a week walking with Jesus, talking with him, and listening for his voice as you read the Bible. And when he does speak, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. Peace.